Loki season two, right off the bat, wasn't going to hate on it. Was going to be, yeah, I was going to give it a shot. But uh, we may have some problems. Houston, we have a problem. Uh, now, I just finished watching Loki episode uh, one, season two, the, the new Loki series again. And what I, what I think about the first Loki season was this was the beginning of the fall of the MCU where people were just not going to be super interested. They took one of their favorite villains and put him in a desk job and gave him a nonsensical plot and made him the co-pilot to his own series. It's funny because Ahsoka is also the co-pilot of her own series. Kind of a theme going on here. But again, I was I'm like, all right, Loki season 2, going to go into it, going to going to give it a new shot, fresh lens. True critique, not going to go in it, you know, let's move along. I'm going to move the past, close the doors. So I'll say good and bad. Um, ultimately, when you hear me explain the plot to you, you will realize that absolutely nothing happened in this episode that was of any importance. It was basically a rehash of the first season and nothing really happened. But I will say they get an A for set design. And, you know, I like the costuming. I like the atmosphere. It's kind of interesting. It's intriguing. So those things they get they all they get A's for um, acting. There's a couple of okay scenes in there, I guess. There's really not a lot. Go- there's not a lot of Loki. So let's get right into the plot, and we'll talk about it again. I don't hate this episode. I just it's spelling something bad is coming, and it's it's not a bunch of Kangs because we was Kangs, baby. We was Kangs. Uh, This is the night of the premiere. So I'm assuming I I did not see a lot of advertising for this. So I'm going to assume not a lot of people have seen this so far. There will be spoilers for this. Although I promise you there's nothing to spoil. Uh, Tom Hiddleston reprises his role as Loki. Along with Owen Wilson. Shows up as Mobius. Morbius. Uh, We do get new character we get a couple of new characters that i'm like why are you talking why do i care about you people from the time variance what i want people to remember the time variance authority the tva aren't we the baddies aren't they the ones killing pruning people destroying it we're supposed to root for these people very confused about that little morally am ambiguous And what exactly are the stakes? Essentially, it seems like Loki was kicked through the time door after confronting Kang at the last season by Sylvie and doesn't exactly know what happens, but is assuming something bad happened. So I don't even know if... It doesn't seem like he knows that she killed Kang and that there are more Kangs coming, or he does know. It's unclear. But what we do know is that Loki is time-slipping, and it takes them about 20 minutes to explain what time slipping is and ultimately it becomes irrelevant by the end of the episode so what do we have it's been more than two years since loki came through but time passes differently so we have mobius we have hunter b15 wunmi musaku who has more lines in this one episode than she had in the entire first series don't understand what is going on here. Um, essentially, the, the TVA is in shambles. They don't know what's going on. Things are going getting weird. They're going through time surges. And Loki is going in the future and the past in the TVA. And it's you can't do that in the TVA because it's supposed to be outside of time. The entire leadership of the TVA, who we've really never spoken to before, they're all, they've decided to stop pruning timelines. 
even though they're having like it seems like everything's falling apart very weird so at some point in order to stop the time slippage Owen Wilson decides to go visit uh well the the title of the episode is Ouroboros which is the best part of it and he goes down to visit what reconciliations or something like repairs and reconciliations and uh, doesn't it, whatever it's like the whole beginning like it, it doesn't even matter it's uh, like I said by the end of the episode it you will understand that it is completely pointless they have a new creative leadership which i hope is better than previous one michael waldron did the last season now it's eric martin right now i'm not super impressed with eric martin now i think this like i said the the atmosphere that they've created looks kind of cool but ultimately nothing matters so he's time slipping loki is time slipping and he's he's going for one place to the other and time and future and past and wh whatever they come up with this convoluted plan for him to stop time slipping okay sure um he has to create this th th he has to you know he's having a they go down to this this reconciliation place the, the repairs and they meet um the the best part of the episode uh k hu kwan Ouroboros, or they call him ob he's like a tech expert down in down below and morbius keeps saying like ah, i can't remember that they white you know kang wiped my memory but it's been 400 years since he's seen ob ob wrote all of the the guidebooks that serve for the tva and if you haven't seen him in everything uh everywhere all at once he's he's awesome in that just great obviously in the classic film temple of doom indiana jones temple of doom he plays short round fantastic just I, the guy's a great actor <laughs> i would love to see more of him i don't know what he's gonna get in this he might only be in this one episode but basically there's a conversation where loki's in the past um more mobius is in the in the present and they're they're creating this like convoluted thing about how to bring him back and and have him stop time skipping and the temporal loom and blah 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 a bunch of technical mumbo jumbo they end up stuffing owen wilson into a ridiculous spacesuit which is good I, I like that part i like all of the the set design the the concept the the sound design like all it's it's, it's very good i like all of that i think it's it's, it's very cool. It's very sci-fi, but very retro. Almost reminds me in a weird way of like the back rooms because it's like this weird desperation of being stuck in a job that like you don't even know why you're doing it. You're just pruning because like clearly nobody at the TVA understands why they're doing it. Apparently Loki is still wrangling whether or not Kang is a good thing because if he's holding back this army of Kangs that's coming... But again, are they the good guys? Every time they prune a multiverse thing, they're they're killing off thousands of people. But are they really people? Like, what what matters? Like, it it, it you know it, it's it's convoluted, right? And now there's these other hunters that are deciding that they need to go off after Sylvie. So essentially, once they solve the time slipping loki situation which seemed actually kind of like there was drama for a hot second owen wilson is outside he shoots some spear to pull loki out of the time stream to bring him back and it doesn't seem like either mobius or loki are going to make it back because ob hits the hits the, the this button that starts dropping down blast walls and then Loki magically comes back, saves Owen Wilson, and everything is fine. And it's like, well, let's go get Sylvie. So you are literally back to the first season where you have to get Sylvie. It's Mobius. It's Loki. We have to get Sylvie. And the TVA is chasing her too. Nothing has changed. The plot has not moved forward. I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> It's very strange. There's something about some conversation, which a, a recording of a conversation. Ravona Renslayer, you are quite a marvel. I will be proud to lead with you. You made a difference in this war. Thank you for being on my team. 
Wh I don't even understand what that means. I don't even know who Ravona is. Like, I'm supposed to remember who that is? She's a former judge. That's the chick that, that Mobius was hanging out with. Whatever, man. I, you probably should have done... Like, it's the show came out two years ago, and I didn't just rewatch it. So, like I said, essentially nothing happens. It, it, yeah, Ouroboros. It's a, it, the show finds itself in a circle. Yeah, because you're just redoing the first season, and then Sylvie arrives in Oklahoma, and I guess that's where she's going to go work at McDonald's because, yeah, it's a McDonald's because there's a crossover where you can get some sort of McDonald's meal. Congratulations. I just don't I don't know that I care. In fact, this description of what happened in this is ridiculous. It's it doesn't work. This is too much description. Nothing actually happens. Who cares? I just I you know, I like Tom Hiddleston. I uh, Owen Wilson is fine. But like I said, ultimately if you think about the initial part of like they solve the time skipping issue and that's it and now what like do i, I was it a, was it that big of a problem like other than it was like they kept making you know jokes about it being like horrifying to watch did it change anything uh, so that's the point too is that they're like well, if we don't solve the time skipping, they create an artificial clock. If we don't sk solve the time skipping, he'll be lost to whatever forever. But then they're just like, let's go get Sylvie. Let's forget about all the ticking time clock stuff. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's it's just shocking how Hollywood has such poor writing. And I just I, we just finished Ahsoka, and I reviewed all of Ahsoka. And the, I, the writer's... The writer strike. I hope they weed out the terrible writers because maybe you need AI to write better shows. Like this is just it was, nothing happened. This was boring. Other than I enjoy seeing Tom Hiddleston act. What, what am I getting out of this? I just I don't know. Again, it's not terrible. Ahsoka, and for all you Ahsoka haters, it. it I mean, by the end, it was kind of clownish. Not as bad as Obi Wan, but still clownish. And not, it's just not good. Am I going to remember this by the end of next week? They're going to have to give me a recap because I don't, I'm not going to remember what happened. The same with this. Will I remember Ahsoka, you know, two months from now? Probably not because there's nothing happened. Why can no one write a plot anymore? Why, why is this so difficult? Anyway, if you like what you heard here today, thank you for listening to me rant and ramble i i know i'm I just, I just, this is ad, it's agitating because i care about this stuff i i collect these things they're in the background they're here for a reason i wouldn't talk about it if i hadn't watched all of it and reviewed all of it for you guys but we do have a full-length podcast if you'd like to check it out it is on itunes stitcher spotify all those great places it's free to you and we also do a live stream of that same thing here 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Friday nights. Come join us. Come join the fun. I promise it's not just hate. It's greatness. It's jokes. It's good stuff. We'll see what the next episode has. Again, didn't hate it. Didn't love it. Not going to remember what happened. Uh, really like the set design. Thought that was actually pretty fantastic. So let me know what you think in the comments below. But I am on to the next one.